It is, we can know for certain the season. And she put capital, put the word season in all caps to emphasize we can know the season as opposed to the, the exact day or hour. But she says, or asks, we can know for certain the season of Christ's return. Okay. Well, I already answered it, but uh, anybody eager to go first? All right. I okay. Guess. Okay. I mean, it, it, I, yeah. I mean, uh, I wish I had time to look, look at this a little more deeply, but um, well, a couple a couple things. I, we know that we don't walk by um, sight; we walk by faith. Uh, and that's what, but the Jews, they, they, because they don't, the unbelieving Jews, they, uh, they, they, that's why God gave them signs because they didn't walk by faith. And that's why they demanded a sign, uh, sign after sign after sign. Um, and Christ, uh, graciously provided them. Uh, but there was a point where he said that no more signs, the sign of Jonah is all you're going to get. That's the ultimate sign. Um, but I, I believe there are signs forthcoming, uh, that, that will indicate, uh, that yes, we will know this season. And even in Hebrews, to believers, uh, says, you know, we should stir each other up for uh, for good works, even as we see the day approaching. So um, I believe there are things that we can see that we can, that, are, that are prophetically lining up. Um, and it's not just specific things, but more like patterns. Uh, like, for example, um, I think, you know, for example, I think uh, lawlessness will increase more and more. Uh, what I mean by law is just sin. People will celebrate and grovel and sin more and more. Uh, truth will be suppressed more and more. I think you'll, I think you'll see a, a rapid and uh, progressive um, um, de-evolution or devolution into uh, depravity. I think that's a, that's a possibility. But I think you know, other, other than that too, you just will see different signs. Um, and I, I, but I would be cautious of looking at maybe like um, uh, astrological signs. Uh, because there, there's been many times where people say, oh, see, this astronomical uh, occurrence is, is um, we can observe this happening in 2012 or whatever. You know, that the, the the woman will be clothed with the, um, I, I forgot the, the terminology in Revelation, the, the woman will be clothed with the, with the um, sun and the, the moon at her feet. And people, I thought, you know, again, as an unsafe person about 15 years ago, People were mentioning that, and I thought, okay, well, this is definitely it. I mean, it's it's, it's an open, closed case, um, but obviously it wasn't. So I think we got to be careful. But uh, I think I think the signs will be overwhelming. Um, that things are very are, are getting nearer and nearer, um, and that's why I personally don't think I personally uh, think I think we're obviously every day as we as we get closer to Christ's return, it's 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 nearer. But um, a lot of people feel like it's right at the door, and it could be. I could be wrong. But um, a, a lot of the, the evidence and things that they'll cite to to defend that, I just don't see are, are, are convincing or unique to our time necessarily. I think it'll be overwhelming and unprecedented, the things that we will be seeing, uh, things that haven't happened necessarily in history, at least, you know, for a couple thousands of years at least. Um, but that's just my take. I mean, I, I, I think, again, we can know uh, generally. But the good news is that um, even though we're exhorted to watch, uh, we don't have to. There's no such thing. I, I believe, you know, the, really the next major thing on the prophetic calendar is the rapture. And uh, I believe that personally. And it, it Thessalon Thessalonians says that whether we are awake or asleep, and I believe the context there where it says sleep is not uh, like like uh, you die. I believe it's, it's you're spiritually uh, a, a wall, essentially. Um, the if you're, Whether or not you're, you're spiritually asleep or spiritually drunk, so to speak, um, we, we will, uh, that day will not come upon us unawares. It will not take us by surprise because we will be, uh, raptured out of it, I believe. Um, so that's my initial take. All right. Thank you. So how did you answer the question? We, uh, we can know the season. I, I think we can, uh, I think we will know the season, um, I think I think we will know the season. However, again, because of the, again, first me personally, because of the rapture, I believe that the the major signs, like the the certainty of the season, uh, may not may be lost on us because we'll be out of it. But for unbelievers, 
um, at that time that you know are probably wondering what's going on here. They will see if they want if they wish to see. They will see irrefutable signs that yes, they the season is uh, very near. Unbelievers, and then also in the pre-trib view, the tribulation saints. Mm-hmm. All right, go ahead, Angel. Go ahead, give us your answer. That's my my question, so I have to go last. All right. oh, I'll okay. go next, for the loop. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just was looking up real quick. What the different? There are many different scriptures about seasons, so I don't think the Bible would talk about them if we weren't able to discern them. So I would uh, say on my answer on the question was uh, leaning true. I think that's what I clicked on there. And the only reason I put leaning instead of certainly true is because um, while I think we we will definitely know around the time we can say, hey, look, this is this stuff is getting so crazy and and bad. Just like as Jesus said, when you see all these things, look up for your redemption draws near. So certainly. But uh, I think it's still going to be. At a moment when we we really aren't expecting, I mean, in the middle of the bite of the cheeseburger or something like that, you know, um, it's not that we're not looking. It will just be, you know, we're busy doing whatever, uh, continuing in ministry, doing whatever we're doing, living our lives. And he's going to say, come up here. Then we're going to hear that trumpet. As I said, I'm not looking for signs. I stopped that a, a long time ago. I'm listening for sound. But anyway, Genesis 1, 14 through 18. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven and divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and god made two great lights the greater light to rule by the day and the lesser light to rule by the night and he made the stars also and god set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw it was good. And we have Genesis 8.22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night, shall not cease. Psalm 1.3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Psalm 104, 19. He appointed the moon for the seasons. The sun, S-U-N, knoweth his going. Okay? Ecclesiastes 3.11. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Isaiah 55, 10 through 11. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth the bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Daniel 2.21, and he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Acts 1.7, and he said unto them, Is it not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power? Galatians 6.7-10, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. 1 Thessalonians 5.1 but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. So we see that the Bible does have a lot to say about seasons and times and harvests and um, promises that are even made that are associated with that. So there's a lot to be said of that. And I do think that 
based on those things, based on the scripture and what he has set for times and seasons, we are able to discern it's about that time, <laughs> you know. So that's why I said leaning true, although I still think it's probably going to be a surprise, even though we know we, we're right there. We're at the door. We know it. We all see it. We all feel it, uh, especially as we see the darkness. As I say, it's not it's not that it's rising. It's being unveiled. It was always there. We just didn't see it. And these things are being pushed out in the open because, as I've said before, it's my my perspective is that when the Lord judges the wicked, the, the whole world is going to know why. And it, they're going to say it's actually righteous. Uh, they're going to know that these people deserve the judgment that's coming upon them for the wickedness they have been doing. And he's he's literally pushing them out in the open so that uh, it will uh, not only be an astonishment, but also a warning to to those who aren't saved. You better get saved because the Lord is not playing <laughs> his judgment and his justice will not sleep forever. That's all I have to say. OK, that was a lot. Very good. Thank you, sister. You were able to find a lot of verses about times and seasons and uh, that uh, all the time everybody's talking, I'm searching on Bible Gateway tr trying to find where those verses are. And for some reason, it's not pulling up anything. That I, 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 I know there's verses that have these. I'm not, I may not know the exact quote, but I got part of it. So why can't it show up? Um, but I... So I answered the question undecided, but when you think about it, it, can, it says, can you know about the season? Uh, and if I say undecided, <laughs> then I should be able to say you can't know then if, you're, if I'm undecided. I, I don't know. But uh, I was reflecting on the, the verse about the, uh, when Jesus talked about how um, uh, there's going to be uh, events um, and, and he likened it to a woman uh, giving birth, how the birth pains get closer together and more intense. Uh, and, and then you'll know that the end is coming, uh, is near. Uh, but I thought there was other, a verse as part of that that says that you, you don't, won't know the day, but you'll know the, the season. So I'm, I'm, I'm just go, trying to go from memory because I couldn't find the verses. Um, but I'm, I'm one of these people that um, I've studied eschatology probably as much as anybody here, but I, uh, the more I've studied it, the more, the le less confidence I've had in, ter in terms of what is the, the right uh, perspective. And, uh, so, but we are cautioned about, uh, you know, naming dates and, and, and taking it too far. If you're just taking it too far, if you're trying to uh, prophesy a, a date. And, you know, there's a lot of people who, even in our lifetime here, we've observed a lot of people picking dates. And then you have the the Jehovah's Witnesses and, and other groups that famously picked dates and, and, and said, uh, this is the year, and they even come up with the exact day, and it doesn't happen, and, and they're embarrassed, and we can use that to, as a testimony that they're, they're false prophets. Um, so I, I'm just saying, well, let's be careful. Uh, I would caution everybody to be very careful since, since we're warned about uh, you know, picking dates. Uh, let me well, see. Brother Luke? Yes. If I can interject, there are uh -huh. two passages where the Lord uh, spoke about this expressly. Luke uh, 21, tw um, 25 to 33, where he says, And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And this is when he goes in all the different things that will happen. And he says, when you see all these things come to pass, look up your redemption draws near so that's one passage and then the other one is matthew uh 16 uh verses one through six where he's speaking to the pharisees that says and the pharisees also with the sadducees came and tempting desired him that um that he would show them a sign from heaven and he answered to them when it is evening you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red and in the morning it will be foul weather to the day today for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye, but can ye not discern the sign of the time? So, and then it goes on. So, um, I just wanted to point you to those passages that do talk about discerning the times based on the things that are going on. So, just just so you know. And there is also Matthew twenty 
four thirty-six. Says, oh, sorry, it says, but of the, uh, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. I think that was the verse you were looking for, Luke, about how you can you can't know the day and the hour. I think I just wanted to add that. Yeah, that's that's right. Matthew twenty-four, of course, is one of the the go-to verses that most people look at for uh, you know this end, end times, but. Um, and then there's people who interpret Matthew 24 as uh, part of uh, the uh, the war against Jer uh, Jerusalem uh, in 70 AD. So there's even that there's controversy over uh, how to apply that. Let me see. Uh, has everybody had a turn except Angel? No, I have not. Okay, Heather, go ahead, and then Angel in created the question, so we'll have her go last. Well, once again, Sister Lisa has has at my bible because i had looked up um uh sorry the verse no it's okay the verse where jesus um rebuked the pharisees for not being able to discern the seat the time that they were in um so but um something that i really wanted to mention for me personally i would say absolutely true we can know the time and the the time and the season um, not necessarily the day and the hour, but the the season for sure. Um, I think that we've got enough clues through throughout Scripture as to what to look for. That anyone who is is discerning and is awake to the things that are going on would be able to recognize these signs, considering the fact that Jesus did tell us when we see these things that we should look up. Um, but something that has has kind of stuck with me um is everyone quotes uh matthew 24 36 um that says but of that day and hour no one knows not even the angels in heaven but the father only but we all we all know um enough to know that when when the bible was written uh that it didn't have the chapter divisions and the verse divisions in it so I like to read the verse, you know, a few before and a few after normally to try and figure out what it's actually saying. Um, and the verse prior is part of a different paragraph. However, it says, um, and, it, and it's a different verse. It's verse 35. But it says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Very next verse. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, but the Father only. So we can know the season of the rapture. But as for the day that the heaven and earth pass away, no one knows that day. And you could, you could possibly say, well, we could figure it out as seven years of tri tribulation and then the thousand year reign. But it's not specific for one thing, because um, the Bible also says that unless those days were shortened, that no um, flesh would survive. And then um, besides that, we don't know how long it takes between the tribulation and the thousand year reign. Um, there, there may be other things that happen in there that we don't see in Scripture. For one thing, um, the the judgment. Well, I think that comes after. But still. Um, the judgment is in there before the heavens and earth pass away to the um, the great white throne judgment, I think it is. So we don't know how long that takes either. So it would obviously make sense at that point that no one no one knows the day or hour at which the heavens and earth would pass away except the father, because that, it's it. I don't know. It just makes the most sense to me. That those two verses are side by side, even though we have put a divider between them, they seem to read like they go together for me. All right, thank you, Sister. Uh, we're always having a little delay when we want to talk because we got to find the button and then unmute. So maybe I'll get better at it. But as soon as you figure out how it works, YouTube changes things and you got to learn it all over again. I don't know why they have to do that, but uh, okay, uh, uh, Sister Angel. I, by the way, uh, you know that uh, we all get to give our initial answer and, and we want to keep it fairly concise. 
but uh, then we'll have a chance for a follow-up answer. Uh, and uh, so um, you probably have more to say, but uh, before we're done, but Sister Angel, give us give us the, the the truth on this. You wrote the question. You must have the answer. <laughs> so a lot of times when I write the question, it's because I don't have the answer. Um, and that's why I want everybody to talk about it. Or it's because I feel like a lot of people get it wrong. And ideally, one of these days, I'm going to clip parts from the shows, um, that, you know, like Friday and Saturday and, 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 you know, any other shows, even that I'm not on that we do that, um, I will be able to put on my channel so that I think it would be good to put on CES too, because I've had people complain in comments because they want to hear, you know, certain subjects that we discuss, but they don't want to do the whole like two hour broadcast or whatever. So, uh, that sometimes I, I, lately I've been asking questions almost specifically for the purpose of thinking that people, especially on YouTube, need, a, need to have some more sound uh, biblical understanding of certain things and wanting to have a whole panel of like, truly saved believers discussing it. But um, for this question, I, you know, I, I, tend to, uh, I tend to agree with what everybody has said so far. Um, I think uh, what, what um, uh, was it? But Heather, it was Heather that did it just now. Heather brought it up that, you know, uh, with the chapter division, that wasn't even something I thought about. Um, but uh, I, I wanted to uh, point out at least the verse that we think of when we think of the fact that um, we could we can't know the day or the hour. I think this would probably go be, could be true for almost all things in God's plan. I think that um, that he doesn't necessarily like he, he doesn't. Uh, telegraph the exact day and the hour of, of some major part point of his plan, probably in, you know, in part to, you know, to, to keep Satan in the dark. So I think that, although I agree that it's, um, that it makes sense really, that that's probably talking about the actual day of the Lord, um, uh, that uh, I think it's probably true for all things, except, you know, perhaps Christ is, is aware of, 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 you know, perhaps the day of his return. Right, because I think that verse has even been used to say that Christ doesn't even know the day that he is to return, and only the Father knows. But uh, what Heather pointed out is a really good point that uh, that could be specifically about the day of the Lord. Um, um, but uh, but yeah, I think that uh, I think that that I'll say leaning true for the question because I think it's funny how we we point out like a lot of the verses what we're supposed to look for, and I, I pulled up some of them. Um, you know, for Nate, this is Matthew 24, 7, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. I would say the earthquakes um, are getting pretty strange. <laughs> I, we've been having a lot of earthquakes in Florida, and I lived there my whole life, and that uh, was one thing I didn't have to worry about uh, was earthquakes. And in fact, I was always told that um, in the Keys, because I grew up in the Florida Keys, and it's, it's at sea level, it was below sea level, basically just a mangrove island chain. Uh, so it's like some mangroves grew up out of the water and trapped sand over, you know, over time or something, explain it. And that, that that's what creates the islands. And so I used to worry about tidal waves. Um, but then I found out that, oh, well, tidal waves come from earthquakes, one. And so they said that, you know, and that doesn't happen very often in that area. So they said that, you know, unless the Canary Islands have had a landslide that I wouldn't have worried tidal waves. Well, um, they also said that the, somehow the coral reef would protect us from a tidal wave. I still don't think that's true. I don't know how that makes any sense, but um, now we're having earthquakes there and it's really weird. <laughs> so I think that maybe that might be something that we can look to that's maybe unique because like for nation shall rise against nation, which I believe in, in, in the biblical sense is probably speaking of races of people um, rather than, uh, uh, actual nations, but either way, this is not a new thing. So really, if you look at a lot of these things, um, a lot of them, except for when we talk about, you know, um, some of the signs in the heavens and, you know, the, the stars falling to earth and the sun, uh, going black, obviously this are, this is in the very, 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 very last days. Um, but um, some of these signs about the last days in general are are, are vague, really, because we can we can't really think. Uh, you know, nations have always ri risen against na nation, race against race. I mean, that's 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 been kind of the way of the world for all all of our history. Um, and then um, you know, we look at um, let's see. Uh, 
Matthew 24, 6, and ye shall hear war of wars and rumors of wars, you know, see that ye be not troubled, um, but, uh, you know, and for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Obviously, that's probably something that's been happening forever. It doesn't appear to me that that we are meant necessarily to be able to, to tell, pinpoint exactly without the Holy Spirit. So, and my, my, my feeling is that the Holy Spirit um, plays a really big part in this for believers. I believe that the Holy Spirit helps us to discern and communicate uh, things to us about about what we're seeing uh, take place. And I I I believe that ever ever since I was born, even as an unbeliever who didn't know anything about eschatology, because that was something my family did not talk about. They uh, my family um, they were you know had the true gospel very solid in that, but. They didn't even talk. I didn't even know about a pre-trib rapture or any type of rapture because my family was so not eschatological that I didn't hear about these things. Um, but even so, e but even as a, a, from the time I can remember, I always had this feeling that I was somehow living in the last days, even as an unbeliever, even as somebody that, you know, uh, I really resented the Bible. So, you know, I don't know if that is, um, you know, it's hard to say whether that's something that's unique to uh, our generation or the Know, the, our several generations that are currently <laughs> currently alive um or if that's something people have always felt uh it's hard to say but i think um when when we put the holy spirit into the equation i do believe that those who are around when um when everything is drawing to a close and it, we're coming really close up on it you know i'm not saying that so that's right now i'm saying when that when those you know the, that last generation i do believe that the 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 saved believers will know and then there will be certain signs that um you know grow closer and closer together just like birth pangs that uh that people are just not able to deny um i do think that in the case of a, a pre-trib rapture this is just hypothetical because of what ben talked about i'm very undecided on this issue but um in a pre-trib rapture i do believe that if there are such a thing as tribulation saints that they will know obviously um um and uh i uh I personally, you know, if the if it's a pre-trib rapture, I don't, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really know if, if, if I think that that it will be. Um, I hear people that are really firm believers in this pre-trib rapture thing, and they talk about it all the time. Uh, they talk about like like how it's any day now, it's any day now, and I wish they wouldn't do that because that was part of what made me so anti preacher rapture from, uh, from before I was actually humbled on the subject and actually humble enough to to be undecided and open to open to to hearing it out and, and really not again I'm not for or against anything um, I'm just neutral on the subject and trying to trying to find the truth on it but I do I do wish a lot of the people that would be um, that that do believe it not nobody here does this is guilty of this but I have I've you know dealt with some people that are our viewers that uh, they tend to be real dogmatic about it and always talking about how they they know for sure it's happening any day. And then when it doesn't happen, it's really discredits the whole thing. And that doesn't do it any service if it is actually a truth of God, you know? But um, I, overall, I would just say, I would say everybody's really kind of summed up my thoughts on the subject. I just, uh, I had seen a video where somebody was talking about how the Bible contradicts itself because it says that, you know, no man knows the day or the hour, but, um, but that somehow we're supposed to be able to discern, you know, the the, the last days and when, when we're in the last days. And I wanted to point out that they were t talking about two totally different verses. Uh, first of all, like I didn't even think about Heather's ankle, but first of all, that uh, the day or the hour is not the same as the season. So we can know the season, but not the day or the hour. But what Heather brought brought up really just expands it even further. But either way, the Bible has no contradictions. So that was my purpose in answering asking the question. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I have about four points that I made as I'm listening to everybody. I'll, I'll follow up. Um, first, um, I'm going to ask Ben, when you get your chance to follow up, maybe you could elaborate on the point that uh, I think uh, Angel was making that uh, it would be nice if in a two hour program that uh, the uh, various subjects that are discussed were somehow I think you were talking about maybe making them clipping them into a series of shorter ver versions uh, or, or time stamping or something. But I know you have a plan, but I think you also said that you need help uh, doing it. So when you get your time to follow up, I'd like for you to uh, speak on that, if you will. 
Um, but I, you know, when I talk about the times when I was street preaching, there's a lot of experiences I had, but I remember very clearly once there, there was another street preacher out there and he wasn't preaching the gospel, which unfortunately that seems to be the case with most street preachers that don't really preach the gospel. They, uh, they either preach repent of your sins or they're preaching, uh, the end is coming, you know, the end of the world. And, uh, I won't repent because uh, Jesus is coming back, and and there. So I remember when he was preaching about that, uh, and, uh, and I got my turn to preach. Um, I was making the point that, um, look, we we can't know when Jesus is returning. Uh, maybe he's coming right away. Maybe he's coming next year, ten years, or a hundred years from now. We don't really know. But I know one thing: I'm going to go meet him pretty darn soon because my life expectancy tells me. It won't be long before I go to see him. So being, we should be more concerned about when we meet Jesus whether, rather than when he comes to meet us. Uh, and uh, that was, uh, yeah. I, I think that almost every believer, uh, th uh, there's two types of new believers, I think. Some people, they get saved, but they never uh, really get uh, serious about Bible study. Maybe they join a church and they, they go to church uh, but that's that's the extent of it, uh, and and they're just as saved as you and I are. But but not everybody has as much zeal and interest as as we do. Uh, but if someone does start getting serious about uh, their their studies, um, I think two things happen. Unfortunately, um, many times it's, I don't want to say everybody, but a, a lot of people as soon as they get serious in their studies. It doesn't take maybe a year or less, and they start becoming dogmatists. And they they think they've got some truth, and now they've got to go correct everybody and and uh, uh, start teaching. I, I think most people should hold off on teaching for five or ten years of study. I, I would urge people to slow down and learn and listen instead of thinking now that I'm studying the Bible, I'm an expert and I'm going to start teaching everybody. But uh, the other thing that they tend to do early on is, um, and it happened to me too, is that I uh, I got very interested in end times. I mean, it is a fascinating subject. And after all, you, if you watch, uh, uh, oh, what was the guy uh, who wrote the book, Late Great Planet Earth? Uh, it was, it Al Lindsay? was it Al Lindsay? I think it might have been, yeah. No, it, it was Al Lindsay. Yeah, so he wrote the book, and then they made it in a movie, and I saw the movie, and and then I got real interested in the subject and started studying it, and uh, uh, and the same thing happened with me with the subject of um, the conspiracy theories about the Illuminati and the Masons and all that. Probably each one of us has had a period of time where we get absorbed, we get obs almost obsessed with that subject, and we, what we do is we 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 neglect what's really important. And we get sidetracked going off and, and getting it really uh, it was focusing on, on these other subjects. And I, I do think it is important for us to, to learn all these things. There's no subject in the Bible that we should be avoiding. And, but um, uh, it's easy to get caught up in these things because they're so interesting. Um, but let's, let's remember our, our first love. That's really what we should need to be um, focusing on. Um, but I've got a question for everybody and when you do your follow-up, uh, and that is, I think we've concluded that, uh, yeah, uh, the Bible tells us, Jesus specifically said, no man knows the day of the hour. So that's established. My question is why? Why doesn't God, why didn't God actually tell us the day and the hour? What, what, what possible reason is does he have to withhold that? Um, and so let me see. Yeah, those are the four points I wanted to cover. So, Ben, if you could go next, just to give me give us the answer to the point that I made about you needing help with some things. Yeah, I also want to follow up on some things because uh, I, Angel, I was answering it from a point of perspective of believers alive today, which I gonna I believe will be raptured, and so there probably won't be a ton of signs. Uh, I, but so I, I want to address it from the tribulation saint perspective because that that's much different answer. Um, yes, with regards to clips. Um, it's probably too much. I mean, it's not too much, but I don't think it'd be worthwhile necessarily to clip every, like I could, for example, every Sunday service program where we have, we field like anywhere from 
uh, two to five questions. I could clip each of those into individual uh, clips. I'd be happy to do that. Same with Fellowship Friday. I'm happy to do that. But um, it does take time. And so I would like if anyone uh, in the uh, in the audience tonight um, or after they hear uh, after the program goes live or anyone on the panel here, if there's ever um, a question that you seem worth you that you deem worthy of being clipped out separately, um, I, I definitely I definitely will do that. I, I mean, don't don't hesitate for, you know, for an instant to to reach out and say, hey, I think uh, in fact, I'm going to make it a a, a a point to after every program to ask you guys if there's any questions that you thought were especially um helpful or ad addressed you know adequately enough where they are worthwhile to clip out um happy to do that we'll do that um but again i don't want to do it for every question necessarily because some of the you know some are some questions we answer better than others um and so i'll uh, leave it to you guys um with re with regards to this question though um Absolutely, I believe uh, the if, if, in the tribulation. I don't think there'll be if you're a if you will become a believer in the tribulation. I don't think there'll be any question that you that they they that you will be have been in the tribulation. Um, there'll be sign after sign. Um, in fact, that's what Jesus did when Jesus came. Um, I kind of again, I, I kind of see what happened uh, after the the Jews rejected Christ. What happened to AD seventy as kind of like a mini apocalypse, like a uh, uh, a, a shadow of what's going to happen in greater force in the tribulation. Um, and in fact, if you read Daniel, for example, um, and I know this is a, a this is a, a, a well, I, again, I hold to the rapture view and I hold to the idea that uh, of Daniel's 70 week prophecy where the 69th week when Christ was crucified, basically God hit the pause button. I will see like Israel as God's timepiece in that respect. <clears throat> and then it's going to, right after 70 week, whenever, whenever it's at an undetermined, Determined period of time, um, he's going to return back to Israel, um, and that's when you're going to see the signs again. Again, when Christ first came, he did sign and miracle after wonder to get them to, to He did everything in his power to get them to believe, but they would not believe, and that was prophesied even in Daniel. It says, for example, in Daniel nine twenty six, he says, "After and after the sixty two weeks, Messiah will be cut off, but not." For himself and the people of the prince who is to come shall just des shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end of it shall be with a flood until the end of the war desolations are determined and what's interesting here is that the end of it will shall be as a flood i i believe again what happened in AD 70 was kind of like the opening salvo uh of what what's going to happen in greater force in the in the tribulation i think it's part of the reason why for example you don't see in, in uh, Revel, you know, we know that, uh, like Peter said, even that, um, and what one of the main emphasis in Peter's uh, epistles, if you read it, he mentions the he refers to the flood over and over and over again. He does in Second Peter three, where he talks about the the people willingly forget that the flood came. Um, he talks about you know we should not live in our sin anymore. We and, and partake of that flood of dissipation. He calls it. Uh, he talks about them being how water baptism saves you, and again, not saves you in an eternal sense, but uh, it delivers you from that wicked and uh, that wicked generation, essentially, uh, that rejected Christ. Um, I can go into much more, and I can't unpack it all, all now. But again, it, I, I see that you know the seventy week of Daniel when Christ is cut off, it's like a flood, just like again what Isaiah said, uh, you know, what happened in the beginning. Um, the, he tells the end from the beginning, so the end will be similar to a flood, um, just like uh, the first uh, God's first world uh, judgment on the world, um, and and also too, like Lisa mentioned, a bunch of uh, verses about signs and seasons, uh, but most of those uh, signs and seasons were re regards to the you know the earth and and its uh, natural cycles and whatnot. But Jesus rebuked the, uh, Israel of that time for taking things, you know, th thinking on an earthly level too much and not thinking spiritually. So, for example, when he said, like you guys quoted, Luke 12, 54, he says, Then he said to the multitudes, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say a shower is coming, and it is so. Well, again, in this passage, he's teaching, hey, you, you can see the earthly uh, signs of seasons. Why can't you not see now the, the spiritual signs of seasons? Because I'm here. I, the, 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 
69th week that Daniel prophesied, you know, the, the Jews anticipated a king at that, uh, a Messiah at that time. There was all kinds of talk about the Messiah. They just didn't see Christ as that Messiah. Um, so and that's why I believe the, uh, uh, another reason why the, uh, the, the Magi came. They knew based on prophecy and the signs of the stars that, uh, that Christ had come. So, and so also too, that when he says, you know, whenever you see a cloud rising out of the West, immediately you say a shower is coming. Well, elsewhere in scripture, it talks about the rain being basically the word of God or, or t sound teaching from God. Like when Hebrews, for example, it says, um, uh, that for the earth, which drinks the rain, that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those to whom it is cultivated receives a blessing from God. So it's, it's, it's again about and the whole idea of a Hebrew is not, you know, listen to this, listen to this gospel. I believe the word gospel in Hebrew is referring, the, the gospel is not the gospel of how to be saved, but the good news and the good news is the epistle itself. It's the rain that's coming down um, and that they should, they should heed it. And uh, so, again, the word of God is in, in, in the truth of God or good teaching or the admonition, exhortation is rain, essentially, that waters that word of God, that seed. And then also, too, in Luke, he continues down further. And when you see the south wind blow, you say there will be hot weather. And there it is. Again, the wind is a picture of the spirit. Uh, but they says, you hypocrites. And all, all, through the, all through the synoptic gospels, when you see the word hypocrites, he's referring to unbelievers. Because they're they're hypocrites because they're under the law and no one can keep the law. So you're but they thought they were keeping the law, or claim to keep the law. That's why he calls them hypocrites. And um, and he says you you discern the face of the sky and the earth, but you do not uh, discern this current time. Um, so uh, I, again, I think I think absolutely in the tribulation there will be sign after sign after sign. In fact, I think it's part of the reason God's doing it is to wake people up, smack them out of their stupor, their spiritual stupor. And uh, it's like a one last chance to, um, to uh, you know, to come to faith. And, so, and many do. Many do. So, um, but for us personally, I, you know, if us as believers in this day and age, and by the way, we are in the last days. I mean, First John says that, uh, there's other passages too, but even in First John, he says in those days, uh, you know, he says that we know we are in the last days because many antichrists have come already. So I believe basically... Um, after the, the the ascension of Christ, essentially that started the last days. Essentially, and I think it's an indeterminate period of time, um, uh, but it ca it's capped off by the seventieth uh, week. Um, uh, I can say much more, and I probably forgot a million things I wanted to say, but I'll leave that at that for now. Hey, uh, thank you. That was a lot of good uh, points you made. Uh, you didn't uh, answer the question I asked. Uh, I want to see if everybody could give me an answer. Um, even if you say, I don't know, but okay. uh, the question was, uh, Jesus said, no one knows the day of the hour. Why couldn't he have said, or, Hey, here's the day and the hour. What, why did God decide that we can't know the day or the hour? Do you have an answer for that? Um, I, well, I think I, I just, that's the way God wants to do it. Um, I, I do know in, in the Jewish tradition, I think I, 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 well, I do, I don't know this, but I've heard this, that in the Jewish tradition, uh, that was actually something that, that the um, the father would do for his uh, son when he was going to get him married. He would uh, he would make preparations uh, for the wedding, and then when everything was ready, he would tell the son, "Okay, all things are ready. Uh, bring in the uh, invite the guests, essentially, or uh, not only invite the guests, but it's uh, we're ready to receive the guests." Um, and so I wonder if, if if it's something like that. He used that for that purpose. Um, why it's so, um, I think part of it is the also too, if we knew the exact day and hour, I think we, we would behave differently. Uh, God knows certain things. Uh, I think some, certain information God knows he withholds because he knows if we had that information, we would, you know, sit on our dairy ears and say, oh, well, it's not time yet. I'll wait until I know, I see the, the day, when I know the exact day and hour is coming, then I'll get my stuff acting gear and start working for the Lord or, or whatever. Uh, so I think he does it because for, I'm sure that's many reasons, but that's, may, that may be one of them. Thank you, Ben. All right. Yeah, Maybe, little, can yeah, I answer that? Yeah, please do. Thank you. Yeah. I put that in the chat. Uh, why I believe that he didn't tell us one is partly in reason <laughs> because of what Ben said, you know, as human beings, we take the path of least resistance and like, okay, 
the Lord's not coming till, you know, January. I'm, I'm just throwing this out there. I'm not saying this. January 5th, 2021. So if you're in, you're in 1975, you're like, I'm not worried about it, you know, or they'll have the person who'll be, you know, the person be active. Well, I'm going to be active and be stacking my, my credit for heaven. You know, you, you're going to still always have, you know, different factions and different mindsets, but uh, most people going to take the path of least resistance and go, ah, I don't have to worry about it. I got 25 years, 30 years. And it's just, it's just what we have a tendency to do. But what he did was, I believe in John, first John chapter three, I think we see a glimpse of why. It says, I'll start at verse two. It says, beloved, now are we the sons of God and it doth not appear, that doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. I think that's why he didn't tell us. Because if if you know somebody says, I'm coming, I'm coming for you, but I'm not going to tell you when, then you got to be ready. You got to keep yourself ready. It's like, you better be ready when I come. <laughs> well, I'm going to leave you. So when we see this and we go, hey, I better be ready when he comes. Well, how are we ready? We got to be saved. We got to be in the beloved. See, we got to be the son of God. So by having this, now that we are the sons of God, we know he's promised an imminent return and any moment return. Now, I don't know the day or the hour. So what am I going to do when I see that? If I really believe the Lord ain't playing, he's going to return. I better be ready when he comes. So what are you going to do? Oh, I got some dirt on this floor. Let me clean up this floor. Oh, this, this needs wiping. This needs cleaning. It would be the same if you knew your mother was coming. And she said, I'm coming one day next week, but I'm not telling you when. I'm just going to surprise you and pop up. And you know she's going to do a white glove inspection when she get there. <laughs> You're going to start getting stuff ready. You're just going to be like, I don't know where she's coming, but I want to be righteous. I want to look good. I want to smell good. I want the house to be clean when mama gets here. So I think it's the, I think it's the same way that he knew. He, he created man. He knows what's in man. He knows how we think. He knows how we operate. <laughs> And so he gave us something to keep us steady, to keep us on track, to keep us stirred up. Uh, I think that's why he did. In fact, I'm 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 100% sure that's why he did it. Mm, okay, thank you, sister. Uh, now, just to, you should be aware, it's a very risky kind of even dangerous thing to do appear on our panel because whatever you say, people can, who knows what they're going to do with it. Already, Lisa, you're being accused of being a date setter by Switch. Switch says, Lisa set a date, January 5th, 2021. <laughs> That's okay. As I said, it was for the sake of example that if if we were back, I know you know that, but for the sake of example, you know that's just that's just how we are. I mean, I don't know about you, but when it's something I don't want to do, it's like I procrastinate to the last minute of the last second. You know, it's like, I don't want to do it. Now, as I've gotten older, I've learned that the wise thing to do is get the thing you don't want to do out of the way <laughs> so, so you can just enjoy the rest of your time. Otherwise, you got it in the back of your head. I, I got to do this. Oh, I don't want to do it. And you can't even enjoy the time that's passing in the meantime. But if you go ahead and get it out the way, then it's done. You can smile about it and move on to the next thing, you know, but. It took maturity. It took years getting not not so beside my head procrastinating before I learned the best thing to do is just go on and get the the bad taste and medicine out of the way. Go on and swallow it, get it done, and move on to the things that you can enjoy. Wow, that's wonderful. You know, that's that is a wise advice. It's January first, and you only have five days left, everybody. Remember, so. But Lisa's <laughs> advice, everybody, is get all the hard things out of the way. Don't procrastinate and delay it. That's wise words for everybody it's for, to make your New Year's resolutions. Thank you, Sister Lisa. You're welcome. All right. So uh, anybody else want to follow up? But I, anybody else have any answer to my question? I thought Lisa's answer was excellent. Um. Yeah, I think that, well, because um, even the first century um, believers, thought that Jesus was coming back in their own lifetime. They thought he was going to go up and come right back down. Um, and if, and if we did know 
the exact moment when he would be coming, um, I think that it would, like everybody said, we, we would procrastinate. Um, that being said, I, I do believe, like I said, that we can know the, the season for sure. I do want to say something else, though, because this is something that I have seen in in the discord channel and in a um a couple of uh facebook groups that i'm a part of this this setting dates thing brother luke hit the nail on the head um i was born and raised in the jehovah's witnesses so i've seen dates come and go i've seen dates come and go since i was a little girl um i've seen the the definition of a generation be changed um and it's it's ridiculous and all that does is hurt somebody so as much as i do believe that it's okay for us to look for the season and to look for the the time and to watch and to wait i think we also need to remember to not sit down and wait but be actively working and moving and going about our lives and we need to we need to f spend time in the word we need to build our relationship with jesus we can't just wait to go because i personally have been hurt from that um my heart has been broken because I i've seen these dates that that people set and there's so much compelling evidence and i'm like okay so it's I don't want to do this, but okay, it looks like it's going to be this day. And then it comes and it goes and it comes and it goes. And I've, I've been brokenhearted. And to be completely honest with you, I have had anxiety over this. And I think it's just so important that we stop doing this. Watch, absolutely watch. I would never discourage anyone from watching, but stop setting dates. Please, please stop setting dates. All it does is break the hearts of babes in Christ who don't know any different and who will believe anything that they're told, especially by someone who is more mature in the word than they are. Sister Heather, I love your appeal, but I'm going to tell you the truth. What I think the people that you would make that appeal to are not going to listen and they're not going to hearken because they wouldn't even need that admonishment. If they were doing what the scripture says, you know, the Bible says that no man knows the day or the hour. Yet they run around with all these elaborate constructions and why they think it's going to be this day and this hour. And they're actually going against what the Lord instructed. So people who are believers that are going to hearken to the voice of the Lord, they wouldn't even need that admonishment. And the ones who who you given it to ain't going to listen. They're going to continue to do that wickedness where they get out all these charts and calculate, make all these calculations. And it's totally against what our Lord instructs. We're not even supposed to worry about it because you, if you're a believer, you've got your, as I call it, your J ticket, your Jesus ticket, you're going. So I don't have to worry about when he's coming. My focus is just to be about the Lord's business and what he's instructed me to do. I don't have to worry about when he's coming. I'm paying attention. I'm discerning the sign of the times. I'm paying attention. I'm like, it's close. But no, I don't know the day and I don't know the hour. And they're actually they're actually showing you I, I, that they're being disobedient by setting a date. They embarrass themselves. I mean, as I put in the chat, the one day that I'm sure that they're that Jesus is not coming is the day they claim he is. Because he is not going to be made. Angry. He's not going to be made to be a liar. He said no man knows the day or the hour. So the guaranteed date, they're not coming. If they said, like I said, Jesus coming January 5th, the, I guarantee the day he ain't coming is January 5th. Because they have That's no right. business doing that. That's right. That's absolutely right. And um, I, I was kind of speaking to myself as well in the past because I have done that. I not not specifically set a date. But I, I've never set a date, but I've fallen into the trap of listening to the dates and, and counting on the dates. And so and gotten excited about them and, and shared it. And I know I've heard a couple of people's feelings with that. So, um, yeah, you're right. They're not going to listen. Um, but 
all we can do is tell our experiences, right? And hope somebody learns from them. Amen. Yeah. Uh, well, Heather, you you made a point that uh, even at the time in, in the first century, uh, they expected Jesus to be returning right then. And that's the reason I posted this verse, 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And uh, so this verse is, is referring to the fact that even at that time, people are complaining, hey, he's, he hasn't returned. Why hasn't he returned? Or maybe, or they started doubting and, 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 and saying, hey, uh, maybe it's not true. Uh, and most of them, of course, by that time, they, they didn't ever meet the risen Christ. So they, uh, Peter is saying, he's, no, he's, he's not being slack. He's made a promise. And, and uh, but he's long suffering. I mean, he's being very patient. But aren't you thankful that he didn't come back then? What would happen if Jesus had come back in the first century? We would have never been born. None of us would have been born. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for, for being slack, but not a yes. count slackness. Well, I, I actually wanted to say this as well, and I'd forgotten, but um, I had mentioned earlier about the prophetic days um and that that's something that um has has come to mean a lot of, uh, mean a lot to me because um the the waiting does get overwhelming when you're watching all the time um but thinking of it as it's been two prophetic days if a day is a thousand years and that's a prophetic day then for god it's been two days since Jesus died and was resurrected. So when he says he's not slack, don't think for a moment that he stopped watching. Don't think for a moment that he doesn't know when the time is. And don't think for a moment that for him, it's going to be a thousand years. It may be 2000, two and a half thousand <laughs> years, whatever. I don't think so. But um, the point is, if a day is a thousand years, it's only been two days. And all we need to do is keep waiting because that that day is about to change. And the it's going to be that third day. And the third day, um, I don't remember exactly where the, the prophecy is, but it talks about um, being in the presence of the Lord on the third day. I, I, I'll look it up. But um, so, yeah. I don't think we have that much longer, but it, it was just very encouraging to me to, to, for the Lord to remind me that he's not stopped watching and he's not stopped looking forward to that day either. Amen. Uh, well, uh, Angel or, or Ben, do you have any more on, to say on this question? I felt like everybody covered it really well. There's just not much constructive I could add, but I don't know about Ben. Ben might have some more. You're satisfied then? You got got a good thorough answer? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for that. Very very good.